digital versus traditional inking the question that has been asked since the dawn of time well not the dawn of time i doubt there were cavemen drawing manga back in the day <laughs> however i suppose it's the question that most manga could have been asking ever since drawing tablets and digital work became a thing i always get asked this question jay what's better digital or traditional inking and to that i say yo what is up everybody if you don't know me my name's jay and i'm an aspiring manga artist i practice my craft every day and i also like making youtube videos on it so here we are you've stumbled upon this video and you wish to know what type of inking is better well we got no time to waste In this video, I'll be going through the types of inking and the types of materials used to ink manga. We'll start off with traditional, and if you know anything about making manga, then you probably know what I'm talking about. That's right, the mangaka's trusty blade, the G-Pen. The G-Pen is probably one of the most popular inking tools when it comes to inking traditionally, especially manga. Back in the day, and I mean a while back in the day, I'm talking 1700s here. These types of pens were literally the only type of pen that existed. I'm sure you've heard of the feather pen or quill pen. However, those pens are nothing compared to the mangaka's dip pen and ink. Dip pens do not store any ink in them, but need to be dipped into ink every few words or lines of drawing. An artist can easily change the color of ink they're using by simply wiping the nib and dipping the pen in a new color. For example, Using white ink is also an option when making traditional manga. Now there are three main types of nibs that go with a dip pen and ink. The main one is of course the G pen nib. This is seen as the most versatile nib for making manga, particularly shonen manga. Manga aimed towards a young male audience. Mangaka like Akira Toriyama, the creator of Dragon Ball, and Ichiro Oda, the creator of One Piece, are known for using this nib. Then we have the Maru nib, or otherwise known as the Maru pen. This pen is similar to a G pen, however, has the capabilities to produce large amounts of ink on the paper. It's similar to a G pen in its versatility, but there's not much about it. Then we have the Shoujo nib. Now the Shoujo nib comes from the term Shoujo, which is used to describe manga that's catered towards a young female audience. The nib is used for a variety of manga and it's probably the nib that's second most popular to the G-Pen, particularly because of its reputation for extremely detailed artwork. The Shoujo nib is in no way seen as the girl's nib. In fact, it's more seen as the nib for extreme detail. Most backgrounds which are drawn are particularly drawn with the Shoujo nib, similar to things like hair and other miscellaneous details like cross hatchings, shadings and lines. Here's a short demonstration of what the dip pens can do. And now we move on to fine liners. Now, <laughs> how do I put this? Fine liners are more of a beginner's tool. <laughs> that being said, as much as I despise fine liners, well, I don't despise them, I just barely use them. As much as I barely use them, fine liners are very useful at times, and especially for drawing things like boxes, panels, and speech bubbles. In my opinion, Fine liners aren't necessarily a tool for drawing manga itself, but more of a utility tool for drawing things like speech bubbles, boxes, and panels, etc. Fine liners can also be used to create backgrounds for buildings, and most of the time they're just very easy to use with a ruler. So, if you're planning to use a ruler in your manga, 
then a fine liner would be perfect for that. In place of fine liners, I tend to use brush pens and small brush related ink materials since most of the time whenever I'm using a ruler, I'm going to be drawing thicker lines rather than thinner ones. So I'll be using brush pens instead of fine liners. But fine liners are able to do anything you can think of. The only thing is, they're not as good as dip pens. <laughs> you see, the thing is, fine liners don't have the ability to create thick and thin weighted lines like dip pens do such as making your lines less versatile and causing the line weight to have less variety. Now, did you see that comparison? Yeah, I sure did. It's clear that the G-Pen or in fact the dip pens as a whole are way better than normal fine liners. However, this doesn't mean that fine liners themselves are bad. Fine liners also tend to become lighter as you erase over them. So for example, if you're drawing with pencil and ink rather than blue pencil and ink, you'll have to erase your pencil lines. And when you do that, the ink of the fine liners will actually become lighter gradually as you erase them. It might not be something that you notice now, However, it is something you'll notice when you finally scan your piece in. Compared to the G-Pen, of course, the Indian ink that you use or, you know, any other G-Pen related ink, most likely will not rub off, you know, as it stays on the paper, it's sort of like paint, it sticks on. And here's the one I'm sure most of you have been waiting for, digital inking. Now, I'm sure we all know, digital inking is very versatile, it's very clean, very simple, and just very easy compared to your messy, inky G pen, Maru pen, or Shoujo pen. Now, this is obviously the best form of inking media, and it's pretty obvious, you know. Whenever you make a mistake, you just one click of a button and it's gone, just like that. Control Z. Digital inking is made to be easy, it's made so you can perfect something without worrying about it being imperfect because there's always a chance to fix it unlike traditional inking and some may prefer one or some may prefer the other however there's not much for me to talk about digitally because we all know what's better and we all know what's worse <laughs> so yeah digital inking is the best out of all the two inking mediums if you are my preference, however, I prefer traditional inking because traditional inking feels very natural, it feels very fresh and organic, and it feels more alive compared to a few pixels on the screen. So, you know, I feel as though if you're more of an artist at heart, then traditional is for you. However, I feel as though if you're an artist who tends to like seeing their creations become perfect, then digital is for you if you're more perfectionist digital is for you if you're more of a creative then traditional is for you that's my humble opinion of course and that's the end of the video i hope you guys enjoy it make sure you subscribe take care and goodbye that's a dinosaur goose